Okay, good morning. Today is Friday, April 17th, and uh, my name is Rocky Walker. I am a chaplain here at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Uh, my normal role is I am the chaplain of the Heart Hospital. Uh, we've since, uh, those most of my units have been converted to COVID units, um, so I'm, I'm a COVID chaplain. Um, today I'm going to walk you through sort of my day. I'm going to let you tag along my day and my days as a chaplain in the hospital are very different than they used to be. The job of a chaplain is to provide emotional and spiritual support to the patients, to the families, and to the staff. That's what I do on a normal day. Now that we're in COVID, uh, that's changed quite a bit. It's changed, number one, because family members aren't here. That's the first change. It's changed for me, number two, because in my units, which are mainly the ICUs, most of my patients are so sick, they're intubated, and they're totally unable to speak, or even most of them aren't even conscious. So that's another really big change and a challenge to what I do every day. And the third big change is the amount of stress that's on the staff members that I take care of. And this is why. This is the biggest reason why. Normally, we're taking care of our patients and our heart goes out to them, And but it's very distant. There's a separation. This patient is suffering from something that really is not a threat to me personally, and now I can be empathetic, but I don't have to really worry about this. Well, now the very threat that is taking the lives of our patients, we're vulnerable to that very thing. Not only are we vulnerable to it, but we're also vulnerable to... Uh, taking that home and infecting our family. So the level of stress for the staff is very, very high. So those are the things that are very different uh, about being a chaplain in COVID pandemic versus being a chaplain uh, in normal circumstances. And uh, it's a lot of stress. There's also a lot of really, really wonderful things happening. I mean, in the worst of times, I, I'm seeing the very best of humanity. And so those ups and downs, emotional ups and downs for me, they're very, very, they take a toll on me. By the end of the day, I'm exhausted. I'm going to let you walk with me today and, and hopefully we'll get a chance to look at some of those ups and some of those downs. Now I am about to go into the ICUs. I start my day in the ICUs and I actually spend most of my time in the ICUs. Um, as you can see, I have on my mask, I have on my um, um, sort of protective glasses, if you will. I've got to hide this handsome face behind all this, okay? My face is one of my most effective weapons. I use my face to disarm a hostile patient. I use my face to uh, make people feel comfortable, uh, to show absolute genuine concern and empathy. Um, I use my face to do a lot of things. And now it's totally covered. Um, but that's part of uh, what we have to go through here. And the ICUs that I'm going into, this particular ICU, is the first ICU that uh, housed COVID patients. And the challenge, again, with this particular ICU is most of the patients in this ICU aren't able to communicate. They aren't able to talk. So we are in a place where we have to learn everything about them from their family members. And the other thing that's really difficult and challenging about this, this is, remember, this is, I'm the heart hospital chaplain, and our heart hospital patients, it's sort of like a revolving door. We know them. We work with them for years. We know their history. Um, these are brand new people off the street we don't know anything about. I got to tell you, when this unit, and again, this was the first unit to go COVID, to walk on here then, it was terrifying. I mean, it was so scary because we didn't know anything about it. And it just felt like I was going to catch it just by walking on the unit. But uh, now it's, we don't even think twice. And you see, all the doors are shut. Okay. That's very different. And then there's still so much um, medical equipment outside the doors. That helps to eliminate the number of times or limit the number of times that anybody has to actually go into the rooms but this is a very good 
unit and we're doing amazing work. You might see writing on the door. That's another thing that we do. We write certain statistics, medical statistics on the doors so that those who are coming by and rounding, they're able to get that information because sometimes it's hard to see the monitors from outside. And again, the key is to limit the amount of times that you go into the room. We're only going in when necessary. And a lot of the rooms on this ICU have been doubled up, meaning there's double beds in there. Unheard of. Just not something that we normally do. And we're about to transition from the rounding to the uh, actual reaching out to the families and start making those phone calls. But before we do that, um, just kind of want to say what I'm observing. I'm observing what I think is a second wave of this virus. And that is a wave of depression, exhaustion, and weariness on the part of the healthcare workers themselves, especially those on the front lines who have been battling this um, for about a month now. And, and I think now I'm noticing uh, everybody from the highest levels of management to you know, the lowest levels of employment and, every, and myself included, there's just a level of frustration. And so now part of my job, that I see that as one of my biggest challenges going forward. So now I'm really keying in on ways to sort of remind the staff, hey, these aren't normal hours. These are highly stress-filled hours and it requires um, elevated methods to, to uh, sort of dial it back and give yourself a break. I mean, that's something that's really important going forward here is self-care and care of the staff because in the military, we call this battle fatigue, combat fatigue, and it's real. And uh, I mean, just pure exhaustion from the emotional toll that's being taken on us, the physical toll that's, that's being taken on us. Um, I played football and before and after that, I was a soldier and and I, you know, in both of those arenas, when you come out of the fight, there's a lot of battle scars. Um, I thought I was safe coming into chaplaincy, coming into medicine, and all of a sudden I'm learning there's battle scars with that as well. Boy, but for some whatever reason, it got brutal here today, about one o'clock. Um, I was called away from the heart hospital where I work to go to one of the other units. And in that unit, one of the nurses died from the COVID, COVID disease. She, the nurse had gone on vacation, I don't know where, and uh, didn't feel good, checked into a hospital, and that unit was distraught. And I had to go over there. One of the things that I do is sort of deal with these groups when you have these huge grieving things. And I think I said it earlier today, <sighs> The hardest thing I've noticed from this, uh, the hardest thing to deal with, it seems to be when we lose one of our own. Uh, it really, really, I think that's because it really makes the struggle, it, it brings it home. Work then goes home. And uh, this is a nurse who's been with us for 21 years. And what do you say to that? I don't have any words for that. I was fighting back my own tears and I've never met her, but as they told me who she was and and shared, that was just gut-wrenching. And then I left that meeting and was coming back to my unit and, and then one of our former nurses who worked here for well over 30 years, um, her health is taking a real downward spiral. How do we get to this? And that's such a good question. How did we get to this? Uh, I don't know how we got to this, but I do know what we've done in the middle of this, and the work has been amazing. And what I shared with those, those I share with everybody, everybody that I talk to, because it's the truth. It's so easy to share this, how strong they are, and how how I see God in their reaction, their response, their courage, their faith, their love for their loved ones, and in each case, the loved ones. They're so blessed to have such strong people advocating for them, such wise and considerate, graceful people advocating for them. Okay, uh, it's the end of the day. I am um, starting my walk home, my walk out the door, 
and uh, it's been quite a day it's been quite a week it's been quite a month you can see in the background uh, more of these beds these empty beds that uh, so far my prayers have been answered not being used we are doing amazing work here at Mount Sinai Hospital uh, we've at this point discharged successfully treated and discharged over 2,400 COVID patients that number grows every day uh, while the number of actively active patients continues to shrink every day uh, I think we dropped either into 500 or maybe even under 500 for the first time in a very long time so I do appreciate you sharing the day with me and uh, thank you for your prayers and your support because we absolutely need that and uh, I hope that you enjoyed this there's a lot of heroes in this building a lot and here we are it's time to go home it's Friday and I need a break take care guys bye